Podcast. My name is John Harris. What is up with the Gospel Coalition Canada? What is up with the Gospel Coalition Canada? I mean, really. Um, maybe someone can put in the comment section and, and write something and explain it to me because it just doesn't it doesn't quite add up. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, one of the articles that they have up there, um, I, someone from Canada reached out to me, sent me the link, wanted me to respond to it. But um, Canada is farther ahead than us, it seems like. As far as like losing civil liberties, Canada is a little more, at least the government up there, they're, they're more willing to do it. They're, I don't know why that is exactly. Uh, maybe they're more post-Christian than we are. Uh, but um, yeah, it, 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 Canada is not on my list of countries to go to. There was one time it was. I really, I liked the, the beauty um, of, I, I mean, I've driven through parts of it, but places that I haven't been, especially out in Western Canada, I thought were just gorgeous. But, uh, I, you know, as gorgeous as they are, I just don't think I'd want to live with the restrictions that are going on up there. And the people that I know who have connections to others up there uh, tell me it's no fun. So um, this is what's going on. And, you know, it may be coming to us. And so I think we should talk about it. But the, the reaction of the Gospel Coalition is kind of it's disturbing to me. Um, so I want to talk about it a little bit. Uh, first of all, let's talk about some things that are crazy going on here because Canada doesn't have the corner on that. Uh, Washington, the state of Washington's governor signs a bill mandating, mandating critical race theory must be trained. There must be tr critical race theory training in public schools. Uh, so while there are many conservative states trying to limit the teaching of critical race theory, Washington is saying, no, we're going to mandate it. <laughs> um, here's something that happened not too long ago in Texas. I'm going to mute it just because there's some profanity, and if you have kids I, that are listening as well, I just we're we're just going to mute it. But uh, this is a situation in Texas. I'm not even exactly sure where this is. This is in Dallas or Houston or where. Uh, there is a um, a Black Lives Matter. It, I guess it's supposed to be a march. This does not look like a march. This looks like a protest where they're just blocking the road and keeping traffic from flowing. I'm not sure what time of the day. I think one comment I saw said it was during when people are going to work. Uh, but regardless, they're just standing there in the middle of the road. They're not walking anywhere. And they they kind of, they don't, they're provoking this man who's angry. He probably has somewhere to go. And the police are doing nothing about it. This is in the United States of America. Um, and online, people were going after this guy, saying how he was so horrible, he was threatening them and stuff. But the, the thing is, and I, I'm not justifying some of the things coming out of this guy's mouth, but they're blocking traffic. I mean, this, where is the law and order? Where in the world is the law and order? I'm just, I'm very um, confused. Traffic's just going back, you can see, forever. And uh, th there's no consideration, no consideration uh, for the people that need to get to work, need to actually pay the bills for <laughs> others who aren't working. Um, I just don't understand uh, why the police aren't doing anything. Now, maybe this is a one of the cities in Texas that's controlled by uh, progressives who like this kind of. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe someone can put in the info section. But this this is happening in a, in a place like Texas, which is amazing uh, to me. And I understand. I think there's a bill uh, that's coming forward to try to ban people blocking the roads for political purposes. Which you know you'd think that's an obvious thing, kind of. Uh, I mean, if you want to get a permit, you want to have a parade, that's one thing. That's not what this is. Uh, and then we have, um, th this, is, this is just <laughs> New York. New York court, New York State, threatens to take away child over Confederate flag rock. I read that correctly. New York court threatens to take away child over Confederate flag rock. I grew up a lot of uh, my early life in upstate New York. And going to county fairs up until maybe 2017, 18, um, you, there were Confederate flags everywhere at a, at a county fair. It was just, you're used to seeing them. It's banned now. You can't sell them in New York. It's, 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 the way things have changed so fast is incredible to me. But now we're to the point where if you have a rock, and this is an artist's rendition. They didn't even take a picture of the rock. It's just an artist's rendition. If you have a rock that's got a, a, a Confederate flag type painting on it, then that now is, I mean, are they going to, are they banning the Dukes of Hazard? You can't, you know, you can't show that to your kids. Where, how far are they taking this? No old Hank Jr. Uh, Williams Jr. albums and no learning about history either. Because if you learn about the Civil War, you may see a symbol. I mean, this is insane. This is in, in, in a different world. Uh, the world that I grew up in, this would have been considered insane. This is from like 
the onion or now the Babylon Bee, but it's, this is real. Uh, the judge wrote, given that the child is of mixed race, it would seem apparent that the presence of the flag is not in the child's best interest, as the mother must encourage and teach the children to embrace her mixed race identity. See, that's now for courts to decide how parents are going to raise their children and what identity they're going to give them, because it's a mandate now for the court to make sure that that child has a mixed race identity, uh, rather than thrust her into a world that only makes sense through the tortured lens of cognitive dissonance. The judge said that the presence of the Confederate flag, when viewed pragmatically as a symbol inflaming that already strained relationship between the parties, that this is like getting into areas where I'm just, I don't know what to say, where the, the judge is going to now uh, determine what kind of ethnic identity parents are allowed to um, impart to their children and then attaching this symbol to that somehow the stretch is it's just it's incredible I don't know where where do we this is Pandora's box where does this close I mean are MAGA hats now is that going to be a thing like you know the child should not be subjected to a make America great again hat I mean that's just horrible or you know the child should not wear camouflage pants I mean those are the people that go and kill animals and that could really that's the same kind of logic that could be used so this is what's going on in our country right now um, in New York State. Now, and then enter Canada. Oh, Canada. Um, <laughs> let me, some of you are familiar with the James Coates situation, so I'm not going to talk about that. But you may not know about this. Let me, let me show you this first. Uh, this is a situation that just recently happened. I'm going to turn the volume down here. Um, well, and it looks th this like is... the police is catching us after the church service in the middle of the road. They waited with AHS. And here they are behind. So we'll see. We'll see what is about to happen. Freedom in Canada, democracy in Canada, full force. Unbelievable. The Hello, gangsters sir. are here. So, as per the injunction that was served on uh, Arthur here and uh, Dave back here, I am to place both of them under arrest for breach of the Queen's bench order. Both of us under arrest? Yes, sir. Would you please step out of the car? What's your uh, name, officer? Andrews, 5244. Okay. So how do you feel being a Nazi? And then we got a gangster here. How do you, you want to be... Gestapo. What's his uh, officer? What's your name and uh, I'm number? Asking you. Sorry. I'm What's your name and number, please? 5283 Constable Garwood. How can you look in your uniform and not Drag, dra dragging a pastor, dragging him to their vehicle. So here, earlier this afternoon, my fellow pastor, Arthur Pulowski, was arrested in Calgary for the crime of holding a church service as he does every Saturday morning. Are you awake yet? Hashtag stand with God. Hashtag free pastor Arthur. And there's the picture. Now, this, isn't, this is insane um, that this is happening in Canada. I don't know if they have Oath Keepers or I don't know what the circumstances there are with the police and why they're being so complicit in this, but... Uh, th this is COVID stuff. Now, you would think that Gospel Coalition would say that this is terrible, but this is what's going on with Gospel Coalition. Um, let me just give you some things. What if we had 50 years before the outbreak of serious persecution in Canada? How should we use that time on the 7th? Um, you, you have that going on. <laughs> you already have... Now, what do you mean by serious? You mean like like dying? I mean, okay, that would be something, but you already have people going in jail for holding church services. And it's not just one person. Um, Paul Carter here says this, Pastor Paul Carter, um, who is writing for uh, Gospel Coalition, there are only a handful of churches experiencing difficulty with the authorities, and it is not for preaching the gospel. Many of our churches are running 10 to 20 services a week without any issues, as is often the case. There is more going on than people a thousand miles away may know. Now, there's so many problems, so many problems with this. Uh, number one, um, 
10 to 20 services a week. Think about your church. Because I think what is it? The limit's probably different depending on what province you're in. I'm not sure, but it, you, 20 people, let's say, 20 people you have in a, a church service. And so you got to have like 20 services so you can get your whole church to go to church. So you're ha holding them all week. The church isn't a body functioning like a body's supposed to function with the various gifts serving one another. You, you're just, you're cutting, you're slicing the body up. You're having the hand meat and then you're having the foot meat. You're, you're not open to the whole body. Um, that's, that's the problem with that. Uh, also, um, experiencing difficulty th with the authorities not for preaching the gospel as if the only acceptable form of persecution, and I've heard this before many times, is preaching the gospel. Unless you're preaching the gospel, then it's, it's, it's not a form of persecution. Now, here's a couple things. Number one, were these pastors not preaching the gospel? Because if they were preaching the gospel, then I don't understand what the problem is here. Um, and and I'll, I'll get back to what I think, he, what, what is underlying this. Uh, secondly, though, there are things beyond just preaching the gospel that Christians are supposed to do and responsibilities we have. So it's not just persecution against the church if it's not specifically targeted against preaching the gospel. It can be targeted against other things. In fact, uh, it wasn't a problem even in the early church if Christians wanted to preach the gospel. It just was, you also have to say Caesar's Lord. And that was where the problem was. You, you, you cannot create, you cannot take away from Caesar being Lord. So um, th th this is just, I don't, I don't even understand how he can say this with, with, and write for the Gospel Coalition and be treated as a credible source here, understanding persecution. It's not, it's almost never going to be under the, um, the, the umbrella of, oh, it's because of preaching the gospel specifically. Usually it's something else. And the government's always going to say it's for public safety. But that's the thing. You have to buy into the idea that this is for public safety. Even if you can go to a grocery store, even if you can go to uh, you know, other places, um, even if other things are open, um, it's not for the church. Uh, the church does not have that authority, even on their own private property. They don't have that authority. Uh, it has to be the government making these decisions. Uh, and I'm sorry, the Bible is very clear that um, you need the full spectrum of gifts there, meeting, being able to minister to one another, practice to one another's. Um, you need to be able to, to um, uh, have the saints assembled. Uh, it's just, it's kind of an assumption that the church gathers. And so to say, well, you know, we can go over a year uh, and, and now, you know, who knows how long and just not gather uh, then or have 10 to 20 services a week. I mean, you, why don't you just set up a confessional booth like the Catholics do? Obviously not with the same theology, but you know that then we'll really be safe from COVID. And you can say that everyone went to church because we had a hundred different services and got all the people in. It was just one-on-one. -on -one. You know, that's not, no, sorry. Uh, so th this is the way the Gospel Coalition is reacting. So there's, this, Paul Carter wrote a blog for them. And this, I'm quoting, this is what he said, this is in Canada, at certain points in our journey with COVID, uh, the various protocols and safety measures prescribed by the government may have felt to some Christians like a form of state persecution. After all, many churches were forced to temporarily suspend their main large group gatherings, and normal Christian activities such as singing, taking communion, and sharing a meal together were either strongly discouraged or forbidden outright. Doesn't that qualify as persecution? It certainly qualifies as unusual hardship, but in most cases it probably did not rise to the level of formal persecution. Persecution is typically defined as hostility and ill-treatment, especially because of race or political or religious beliefs. Is that the best way to understand what we've experienced over the last 14 months? It wouldn't seem so. I mean, what if you have the religious belief that you need to gather for church? <laughs> it's, this, is, this is what TGC Canada is putting out there. So, um, don't, don't go to them if you're looking for advice on how to handle actual persecution. Cause when that comes, I don't know what they'll say, but I'm, I'm, my have a hunch they'll take the state side in that too, because they're already doing it. So there you go. Um, that, that is what I wanted to show, uh, to you today. And, and, you know, the gospel coalition, I don't know to what extent, you know, they're linked to the gospel coalition in the United States, gospel coalition, Africa, gospel. I mean, there's gospel coalition websites. Um, I know that they're all, there's a board for the Gospel Coalition, but, you know, this is the kind of thing that just, it, it's so counter what you would think that an organization called the Gospel Coalition would stand for. You'd think they're about preaching the gospel, and they don't want limitations on that. And when there are limitations put on it, 
that they would be fighting uh, for their uh, religious freedom uh, of Christians. But sadly, uh, in some cases, they're at least taking the side of the state. So there you go. That's the Gospel Coalition Canada. Um, hope that was informative in, in some way. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe it was discouraging. Um, you know, the encouraging thing is always that the, these parachurch ministries aren't the church. They're not the church. God will build his church, and the gates of hell won't prevail, and you can't stop the church. But these parachurch organizations that are supposed to be supposedly helping the church, that's their design, that's their mission, sometimes they're doing the opposite. And I think this is one of the areas in which that's happening. So there you go. God bless. Have a good week.